Okay, we're live. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hello. Hello. Um, we have a very special guest with us tonight, John Brightman. Um, Hi, guys. How's everybody doing? And um, I know if um, I'm, I'm going to do my usual and let John kind of um, take us through the all the the the, the steps. You know, um, to where I first met John at the one of the phenomenologies, and we shared delicious moonshine together. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Which one? Who's? Oh, hey, John Brightman, you had it. Yeah, that's right. That's, that's right. right. See, it's all blur with the moonshine. <laughs> it was so good. Oh my gosh, it was delicious. It was, I love moonshine. It's probably the best moonshine I've ever had. Like it was great. Well, yeah, apple pie. Mm -hmm. Yummy, yummy, yeah. yummy. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so just take us through, because then you, I mean, after the phenoms, I remember I saw you were doing tattoos and had a shop, and then now you're basically, are you an agent? You're an agent. So, yep. so let's, let's just start from, you know, ghost hunting. Well, I even met you. <laughs> yeah, let, let's just talk so, about it. <laughs> so basically, I got into the paranormal, I want to say it was somewhere around 2005, 2006, full time. Um, but growing up as a kid, um, I grew up in this area called the Freetown State Forest. My family owned a ton of land up in the forest. My family owns a lumber company. And I started, you know, as a young kid riding dirt bikes and I'd go out in the woods. And needless to say, um, I was probably about 13 or 14. And I had my first experience, but didn't know what an experience was. I didn't know there was a such thing as paranormal then. Um, but me and a bunch of friends were riding through the woods and uh, we ended up, I pulled away from them for a few seconds and I stopped and I stopped right by my family's land. And there's some shacks that are there because my family used to cut trees. Well, they still do, but they used to cut trees up in the forest. And back in the thirties and forties, they actually cut the, like they would live on the land and they would stay at those shacks Monday through Friday and then go home on the weekends. So that's what those shacks were there for. But in the 70s, they abandoned them, just left them. They figured they would get knocked down and rot away. Um, still to this day, they're still standing. I take I take people out there all the time to see them. But um, so I was riding and I stopped right by the shacks and I heard a noise while I was waiting for the other guys to catch up to me. My bike was shut off and I turn around and look and I saw this little figure kid size, maybe four foot tall, four and a half foot tall, standing there looking at me, black piercing eyes, but you could see through it. And I didn't know what it was. I got freaked out, started my bike, went back after looking at them guys, never said a word. Um, wow. It wasn't until about maybe three or four months later that another friend of mine that rides out there said they had a similar experience and actually told me about it. So I told him. Um, Fast forward to about 2006 now, um, I've heard all the rumors that gone on out there of cult murders, suicides, things like this, never really researched it. And I learned, you know, about paranormal research, heard about it, decided, well, you know what, I want to find out what's going on out there. So I started a group. We started investigating out there in the forest with the group. And that's when I learned that the, that the area was actually called the Bridgewater Triangle. I had never heard of that before. Um, did a ton of research on it to find out what it was about and found out that my family's land was part of it. And that there was an actual guy named Kyle Drew that actually killed three people on my family's property. Now, again, oh, wow. as, as a kid growing up, I heard rumors about that, but my family's not going to tell me about that because why would they tell a 12, 14, 15 year old kid about that? You know, they would want to forget of my grandparents and stuff. Right. So I actually found out through research that, through, that three girls had their heads taken off at the shack and the guy believed his father was Satan and they used the head and kicked it around like a soccer ball. Um, it's I, I have the actual court transcripts where he admitted that in court. So, oh, wow. um, you know, we, we started researching. We went to different sites, the ledge, the shacks, the pet cemetery, and it's a true pet cemetery where, they act, where the cult groups would actually dig up the animal bones and use the animal bones. Um, so we just kind of started doing that, and after about a year of doing that, we decided to get more into it and say, you know what, we've learned how to use the equipment, we know 
what works, what doesn't. Let's start doing houses and maybe see if we can get into some of the abandoned properties with permission, like the insane asylums in the area and stuff like that. And we were able to, and that's, that's kind of how we got started with the group. That's awesome. You know, you never know, like, you know, when you first start doing something like this, where it's going to take you, like what journey you're going to go on. I, I had no idea. I thought it was going to be us as a bunch of friends checking out some a haunted forest, maybe some <laughs> haunted <laughs> asylums, you know, because we got tons of them here in Massachusetts. Um, and, and believe it or not, it, the, the weird thing is there's three. So the Bridgewater Triangle is an area that's about 10,000 square miles. And within that triangle, there's three still standing insane asylums left just in that area. In Massachusetts, there was over 30 insane asylums in Massachusetts. Wow. At one point. Yeah, no, I, I wonder why that is. There's got to be. I have no idea um, why there's that many. Because as far as I know, what I've tried to learn, no other state, even California, Texas, Florida, who's massive states don't have more than like five or six throughout the whole state and we had yeah. 30 just in mass and and literally the three that's within the triangle are within 10 minutes of one another wow yeah like literally there is so, this Halton so, state hospital and then five minutes down the road one way is paul dever and 15 minutes the other way from paul dever is um wakefield state hospital it's crazy. Wakefield, I heard of. I've heard of Wakefield. Um, yep. So, uh, like, yeah. Yeah. Where, so, do they date back to, and I'm just throwing this out there, but like before or after the Salem witch trials? Like, do you think there's like something that hasn't, you know what I mean? And so, they all, they, they, through research, they're all way after that. The first, the first one of the three, which was um, Tartan State actually opened in 1884 or 86. Um, the Paul Dever and Paul Dever opened in the early 1920s and Lakeville opened in the 1940s. Paul Dever was actually used as a Im immigrant um, holding spot during World War One and Two. They would put Irish immigrants and Portuguese immigrants there during the wars and hold them so they couldn't cause problems while the war was going on. Wow. Yeah. It's, That's awesome. And and Paul Dever and Paul Dever is the biggest of the three. Um it's at one point it was thirty seven buildings, not including the hospital, with six miles of tunnels underground. Six miles of tunnels. Yep. Um one wow. big circle, one big circle that went the whole property and then a whole a straight one that went across the whole property like a cross. And then there was tunnels that led off from those four, with the four main ones in the big circle, to get to all the buildings. Wow! But, so, so, so is it almost is it almost set up like um, Eastern State? Was it no, like a no. oh no. underground? You know, like Eastern yeah. State, like has the center, and then it has like. Yeah, no, it's. It, I know what you're saying, but no, this this here literally it was just a giant circle on the outside of the property of one big tunnel, kind of like an oval shape, not a circle. Um, and then one big one that stretched one way, one big one that stretched another to make a cross in the center. And then you'd walk down one of those big ones and it would break off down the way into smaller ones that would lead you to other buildings. Because basically what they used it for was to bring during snowstorms and bad patients that were bad, that were misbehaving. They would use the tunnels to bring food to the housing units or transport the patients to other buildings instead of bringing them up on the main ground. So, you do you have do, when you invest? Have you investigated there? Yep. Uh, so, did you have access to all, all of that? Yep. Oh, one, of my, one of my former group okay. members was a state police officer, and he actually patrolled that area. And if yeah. you went in, even because it was state owned, the state police. <laughs> So he would go there and take care of it. So he talked to his bosses and the security guards that were on duty, and they allowed us access as long as we abided by their rules. You know, oh, that's we awesome. wore masks when we went in because the tunnels had a lot of old asbestos pipes in it. So as long as we had abided by their rules, they let us in, no problem. Are they, are they doing anything with any of the asylum? Uh -huh. 
So, uh, so and it's weird because about, I want to say it was six years ago, my grandfather calls me. And now my grandfather still works for my family business, cutting trees. Says, you're not going to believe where I am. And he takes a picture and sends it to me with his camera phone. And he's at Paul Dever clearing all the trees. It's adjacent to a actual um, industrial park. The industrial park bought the land because obviously this place had been shut down since 1992. They bought the land and actually turned it into more industrial park. Well, while he was cutting trees up, they knew of one cemetery on the property. They stayed away from it. There was rumors that bodies were buried everywhere on the property. While they were cutting trees, they actually pulled a few roots with the excavators and up came body parts. Oh, wow. So they he, wow. he right away. I flew down there because I couldn't believe it. Wow. And, uh, and I was like in shock and they shut it down for a while. Um, once they got people, they had to check and see if there was any more, everything was okay, and they finished the job. So now it's just part of an industrial park except for four buildings. The actual old main hospital is still standing. A recreation center is still standing. And two other newer buildings that were built in the 90s before it closed are actually um, uh, 911 training centers. Wow. Yep. But that's it. That's standing. They filled in all the tunnels and they put all new buildings for, you know, that, for different type of commercial work. That sucks. Yep. Well, you know what? I mean, it's the land. Yep. And honestly, it's still there, technically. Yep. You know? Yep. No, and absolutely. I can't imagine that people there that work there now aren't experiencing something. They have to be. They have, they to, have be. to be. I mean, it's so there. There was not a night that we did not go there that we did not get an EVP or see shadow figures moving or hear footsteps following us. Something always happened. Um, one of the most memorable. One of the most memorable things was you. I I know you know him. I'm not sure about Sabrina and Tony, um, but Vinny from my group. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh Vinny yeah. Was yeah. There one night, and one of my other group members, Jeff, was there, and we were walking down one of the main hall hallways in the tunnels, and it comes to a T section. And we saw the shadow figures moving, but we were so far away, we weren't sure if it was people down there or if it was shadow figures. You hear, oh, Vinny, wow. you hear Vinny say, get out of the way for Jeff so he can see. He was telling one of the other group members that. We went home. Next day, we listened to our recorders. Two different recorders picked up Vinny saying it, and then a little kid's voice mimicking Vinny going, get out of the way for Jeff, like that. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. It was absolutely crazy. Um, like I said, we've always gotten good stuff there. Oh, wow. that's, that's, that's awesome. And you know, it does suck though. So they had, I'm telling you, like if I, it was me, I would be like, no, um, I'm just, I just walk in there. I'm like, Hey, you guys experience anything? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, all right, so so you start this group and it, it like totally like picks up, right? Um, and then, so then, how are you? Were you? And forgive me, but I feel at one point at, at one of the phenoms, you was it gone haunting? Got, there was like, were you so were I'm, you going selling those those that stuff? Because I have some, so I feel like I bought some from you. Um, yeah, I, I ended up hooking up with Jen and Marcel. They became part of my group, and they started their thing called Gone Haunting. Um, so I, I had done my first um, phenom, which was actually number two, not number one. Um, I, the owner of phenom, brought me in as a guest speaker to talk about the Bridgewater Triangle. She had saw um, one of the TV shows I did. I think it was Ghost Adventures when I was on there. She saw me talking about the Bridgewater Triangle and everything, and... Uh, so she asked me to come in and speak about it, and I did a little lecture, and I had ended up meeting Jen and Marcel, and they came with me, and they became part of my group, and they set up and started selling the Gone Haunting stuff, and uh, I, I love Phenom. Phenom is a great event. It's friends. Oh, yeah. It's so many friends yeah. there. I mean, even if you go for the first time, you're going to meet so many people that you're going to die to go back the next time because they're all there again. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah, I it is. It's a reunion. <laughs> it really is. It, 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 it is. 
it's awesome and because because everybody comes out to it you know yep. it's one of the things i was so looking forward to this year I know. you know i was like you know phenom like i had off work and i had money and i was like playing i was ready and i was like i was gonna message you like b you bring in the moon and i'm like oh i'm ready <laughs> <laughs> No, you I know. was going to be there, and then this whole coronavirus crap started, and yeah. it just killed it. It, ki it killed all my business, um, from my tattoo shop to um, the convention scene. It's just it's mm -hmm. killed everything, you know? And oh, luckily, yes. we're getting some sporting events back now, but the, you can't go to the, sh to the sporting events, you know? It, right. it's, yeah, it sucks. It does suck. Somebody from the Philippines on here, guys. Yeah. Just yeah. shout out from the Philippines. <laughs> oh wow. Yeah. Um, so all right, so well yeah, so okay, so here you are. So let's everybody like I'm friends with you, so you know I know, but tell everybody so like you, you said something quickly, you were on Ghost Adventures, like how do you how did you go, you know, what else have you like if anything, was there anything else but Ghost Adventures, you know, like how did you get so, that Jeff, Jeff Belandra, there, there's a house here in Massachusetts called the Victoria oh, Mansion. I love, I love Jeff. Jeff. Jeff, is I love awesome. Jeff. Jeff. Jeff knows me, obviously, from Phenom. He, he knows me here from Massachusetts because he's from Mass. And he had known that I investigated the Victoria Mansion or the S.K. Pierce Mansion in Gardner, Massachusetts. Very, very haunted location. It's been on a bunch of the shows. Um, mm -hmm. He knows that I've had some personal experiences there that were pretty crazy. So he reached out to me, asked me if I'd want to do the show with Goats Adventures. I said, absolutely. Um, so I ended up doing that episode and things were great. Um, you know, I, I worked with Zach a little bit, worked with Nick and Aaron and things were great. So they actually asked me to come on, do a couple other episodes with them. So I did. Um, and then um, a haunting reached out to me because they were doing the SKPS mansion. So I ended up doing that one, which I was not happy with how that turned out. Um, very very disappointed with how that really? yeah, yeah. The, the the guy that they well first of all the guy that got that portrayed me looked nothing like me i mean <laughs> you, you guys you guys know me okay? so, i'm a very tall guy i'm six seven i'm 300 pounds you know right, I got the right. Here. they literally picked the guy that was like and, and i don't know if you guys have seen the episode or not but they literally picked the guy that was like five foot two <laughs> with this little tiny scruff of a goatee on him. It looked oh nothing like it. Um, and, and that was just like the small part. The big part was we, my group would never um, play with a Ouija board. And if they did, they would never do it in a location where it could cause harm to somebody else. Right. We were at an event there, not doing a private investigation, but we were at an event there and somebody snuck off with their own and did an investigation with a Ouija board in the basement. Oh. When the homeowner did his interview for the haunting, um, he told them about that. And prior to that, he was telling them how I was there during the interview that night as well. The show correlated it as my group was the one down there. Oh. Oh. So oh. I was pretty, pretty, pretty pissed off about that. Yeah, um, I don't blame you. Wouldn't and they wouldn't edit it or fix it either. I contacted them instantly when I saw it, and they would not do anything about it. So yeah. that's why I don't like that episode. Yeah, I mean, you do hear about that nowadays. People are like, more people are speaking out about how things have been edited and things have been switched and changed to make it. Well, you know, it was, it was the same thing when I did um, my ghost story. We did it on Rose Island Lighthouse, me and the owner, and uh, everything was great except for when the end of the episode they play the digital recording that i got of a female in the room that i slept in saying get out this is my room mm -hmm. and they spun it off as it was a male and because the whole premise was that the white house keeper charles curtis was there in the in the house instead of just saying no that was a female's voice they started right. off saying it was charles curtis telling me to get out that it was his room Right. I so, remember that. I did see that. I remember that. You know, I mean, all right, that's a little thing. I didn't appreciate it, but whatever. 
the, the biggest one, like I said, was them saying the other show saying that I used the Ouija board. I didn't like that. Shame. You know, because I don't yeah. screw around with that, especially at a, an investigation where somebody's got to live in, in, in the house. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. For sure. And, you know, it's, it's crazy because, like, that's where, you know, people that are either enthusiasts or homeowners or people that need actually need help. You know, unfortunately, this is all over TV and the Internet. So yep. people are seeing the shows that are twisting it to be negative or twisting it to do this and this for entertainment purposes. And I get it. So they make their money. But then exactly. you have these innocent people watching and thinking, oh, my gosh, I have I have a demon in my house. You know, right yep. away, like they think they yep. have something bad in their house, you know, yep. and it escalates it. And, you know, and it, it, it really it sucks. It you know, and then when it you're does. on that end of it, you have a reputation to uphold. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know who know you well, and you, are you guys know what this feels like. You do something yeah. screwed up like that, that the field kind of attack you because you're doing something wrong. Right. You know? Yeah. So, For sure. Yeah. So tough, uh, having to deal with that. Yeah. No, I bet. I, I totally bet. Now, I have to say, I have, you know, had, had you have said this to me prior to um, seeing Bob Murch's lecture about mm -hmm. Ouija board, right? Mm -hmm. Prior to that, because he, I literally, it was the best lecture I've ever seen. I mean, he, I, because he totally in one hour made me have all new respect for the Ouija board. Yeah. Really. Yeah. And, and, I, and to this day I do. So, you know, but had you said to me before, I'm like, oh my God, like, you know, what did they do? You know, but you still don't know if the people that were doing it really knew what they were doing. Well, and, and, and that's the thing, like if I have a total respect for people that use the Ouija board and if they know what they're doing and can open and close it the proper way, use Correct. it the proper way, I have no problem with that. Mm -hmm. Will I play with one? No, because I don't know what I'm doing. Exactly. <laughs> the same exact guy. Like if Bob Murch was at an investigation with me and he wanted to break one out and use it, I would never tell him no because he knows what he's doing. Exactly. Um, yeah. But these people, they didn't even have a real board. They had a paper, uh, like a cardboard with all of it drawn on it. So they oh. definitely didn't know what they were doing and it caused right, even right, more right. problems. When, yeah. you're going, when you're going into a house that's that active to begin with, um, Literally, I mean, I on the show, it, it, it shows the episode. It shows me when, when me and Zach were investigating. I literally got scratched down my ribs, and it, and it wasn't what I thought was a scratch. It literally felt like a baseball bat hit me in the ribs, and right. I couldn't breathe. And when I stood up, Zach said, let me see, and it looked like a scratch down my ribs, and it actually made letters in the scratch to either be my name or in coincidence was part of the guy that lived that burnt to death in the house. Right. Was officials too. So it was just a weird situation. But I mean, to have that happen, you don't screw around with that if you don't know what you're doing. Absolutely right. not. Absolutely. I mean, that's, I'm a thousand. That's why, that, uh, that's why that little doll that's behind me stays in that box sealed up right there. That, first of all, I don't know why you have that little doll. You know, you should just do something with that and get rid of it. <laughs> that is my biggest thing. I don't like dolls. I hate dolls. I think they're all possessed. I will go on right <laughs> saying it. I don't even care. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think you could see the room that I'm in right now. You would be mind blown with all the horror collection that's in here. Really? Well, that's yeah. awesome. You know, yeah. but he, and I never. Yeah, no, me. I never even owned a Barbie, so I don't, dolls are not my thing. They, they, nope, nope, nope. <laughs> I, I, I got the um, Billy the Saw, the guy that rides the tricycle from the Saw movie. I have oh, an actual, oh, yeah, I, no, no. I have an actual no. screen used one of him. Yeah, no, I won't even. I wouldn't even entertain a Chucky. You know, like I know that it, I won't even do no. that. Get it? No way. Uh, uh nope, nope, nope. I mean, I think the closest thing I've ever gotten to a doll would probably be a Care Bear. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's the closest thing. So I, I, I like yeah. that. I like that. <laughs> Anthony, what the heck is that? <laughs> You're a little doll. That's your little haunted doll. <laughs> Freaky. My doll with those teeth. That now where did you get that from? See, she has like looks no. like real teeth. 
came from hell. <laughs> It's the only doll I ever owned, but I just for some reason I was attracted to it. So she's she's mine. I hate dolls, and uh, I don't like dolls. Have, but you had that to have her. I like that doll. <laughs> um. All right. So where do we stop? So okay. So so what made you decide to do? Because it I was it tattoos at first, but I feel like you were doing something with you were doing. Because I, I remember, I thought it was really cool. I would never do it, but there was, there were, you were putting piercings, so it looked yeah, like women were. Like I've always done body piercing and tattooing. Um, when when I graduated high school and I was working at a nightclub in Providence um, as a bouncer, I saw a guy doing it at the nightclub, which back then Rhode Island, Mass, it was completely illegal. Rhode Island only tattoos were legal. Piercings, there was no legal or not legal thing to do so i saw this guy doing it at the nightclub that i was working at wanted to learn how to do it did an apprenticeship got him kicked out of there after i finished my apprenticeship and i took over doing it there and ended up uh in 93 starting working at a actual body piercing and tattoo shop so since 93 i've been piercing and since 96 i've been tattooing um, so it was interesting though you you made women have like corsets. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. oh it was so cool because you had you had the piercings, but then you had ribbon in yep. there too, which yep. was really cool. Something I never saw until I saw you 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 were posting the pictures about it. it it's it's um it's a very painful thing. Um and believe it or not, it's it's only for show. Yeah, uh, they don't keep that in. So like a lot of them do it at the tattoo competitions. Um some of them I use had one girl do it for me for my business card. Um, she actually got 110 piercings that day. Um, we did a full corset on her back and a corset yeah. on each one of her legs. I and remember. The back of the thigh. And then we put 40 um, feathers in her back that were stuck in with needles. So she ended up with 110 piercings that day. Yes, that, listen. For her to take it out three hours later after the photo shoot. You have to find somebody that just absolutely loves pain. Well, that and, money, that and money because she also got paid to do it too. Right. I mean, I guess there is a price. Like in my head, while you're saying this, I'm like, man, you could not pay me enough money to go through this. Like, ah, maybe you could. But yeah, but you would also need to at least enjoy. Like when I get tattoos, yeah, it hurts, but. There's a part of me that just loves the feeling. You it, know? It, it's it's almost like an endorphin release. Yeah. When you're getting it. it, it's relaxing to some people. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when, when I had because I have a the Saint Michael uh, emblem tattooed on the back of my neck. I literally that was the only time ever in a tattoo. I thought I was going to be dying. I was like, this is going to suck. No, I almost fell asleep. Like it felt so good. And that was like the only time I've ever, I've had my lower back, I have, I have them all over and um, I fell, I almost fell asleep. Like it was great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my back, my back was not fun at all. Um, yeah. it, it was very, very painful. We did um, four guys over three days, 15 hours a day, two guys at a time working on me to do my back to get it done in three days. It was about 46 hours. Jesus. So wow. I, I will I will never do that again. That was my worst tattoo ever. I, I literally, I won't deny it, I cried on the third day. Like literally full blown tears telling them, leave me alone, no more, I quit. And of course they didn't because they needed to finish it, you know? Right. Well, that's my worst healing one is on my lower leg. Like that, like oh, it's because you're on your It's because you're on your leg the, the whole time. So the swelling of it, Gets to you, gets to you, and it doesn't heal right. And it and like it took forever. Yep. It took yep. forever to we, heal. We tell people that you should stay off your foot for at least a week, but most people have to work, or they don't listen. They're going to the beach, things like that. So it, yeah. it is what it is. I I'm used to it by now. I tell people what they're supposed to do, and nobody listens. Then I get a phone call two weeks later. How come it's not healed? How come it looks like this? Well, you didn't listen. To me. <laughs> <laughs> what appetated now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, how do you go like from all of this, right? Yep. And then one day, 
I see a picture of John and Carmen Electra, like, hey, hey. <laughs> you know, just said, like, did she walk in to get a tattoo? Like, I don't know, how, like, how do you go from that? No. Because, I mean, are you still, through all, out the, all of all these changes and things you're doing, um, are you still doing paranormal stuff? Like, are you still into, you know, are you involved with it at all? Or are you kind of just like... <laughs> We talked about this earlier. Um, yeah, I, I, I am. Um, I can't say too much about it, but I do do periodically. I do different shows now and then. Um, I most people know by now. We just um, I took part and helped make the first actual Bridgewater Triangle documentary that got bought out by Discovery. It was showed on a bunch of different Discovery networks, things like that, um, and. Now, and I've done a couple of spin-off different shows, one up in Canada, one overseas about the Triangle. Um, but I just got reached out to by a network show that asked me literally on Monday, um, so two days ago, hey, would you film with us next week and the week after? Um, we got a new, a new show that new episodes coming up and uh, two of them that you've done, you've been to the locations. So we want you there. So uh, I've been working all the stuff out to be able to do the filming next week and the week after. And uh, as soon as I can say something about it, I'll let you guys know. But right now I have to keep that quiet location-wise and show-wise. Um, okay. They've asked me to do both. Um, so, yes, I still do stuff like that. But I mean, like, what I meant. Private-wise? Like, yeah, private like privately-wise, uh, like anything. I, I don't. I, I We actually disbanded the group um, because... Okay. Between me doing the convention stuff that I was doing, um, and then now being an agent plus trying to run the tattoo shop, I just mm -hmm. didn't have time. Uh, a couple of my group members, they were working with other groups too because I was so busy and we weren't doing cases. So I just disbanded the group. Um, I still get calls every now and then. Hey, you know, we know who you are. Would you come check out our place? And I refer them to a couple other groups up here. Actually, you know one of the groups, Rides Up Paranormal um, mm -hmm. in Rhode Island, Ken DaCosta. I, I refer a lot to Ken because he's one of the locals that I actually trust. Um, right. So, yeah, no, I don't I do not do too. But if I wanted to go with Ken, I'm always told, hey, you're more than welcome to come along. It was your case to begin with or whatever. You know, come have fun. Um, so I will do that now and then. But I just don't have the time because... When I was, you know, at Phenom doing lectures, I, I ended up writing a book. Um, so I was doing a lot of autograph signings for that, um, doing a lot of the other shows. And unfortunately, my agent that I had, along with quite a few of the people in the paranormal, he burnt us off and stole a lot of money from us and stole uh -huh. money from fans. Um, he was putting on fake events that were never going to happen and took money from the fans. So because of that, I left him and all the others did. Um, I started booking for myself and friends that I had made along the way, uh, horror actors and actresses and a few other people, every once in a while, they would see me post an event that I was going to and they would say, hey, can you get me in there? Um, sure, let me call the guy, you know, and I would call the owner and yeah, fine, yeah, we'll do it. And I got him the deal. Next thing I know, the end of the show, my friends coming up to me now i did this just because they were a friend and they're coming up to me going here's your 10 percent. what's this for well you booked me here and i'm like i'm not your agent i'm your friend i did it as a friend thing oh no you're going to be my agent i want you to continue booking for me i'm like this isn't what i do and after about eight or eight or nine times doing it as a friend thing i kind of got talked into it from about 10 close friends and that was in 2016 and since then I went from doing it for like six or seven of us to now having over 70 people. Um, people like Carmen Electra, Charlie Sheen, Jackie Chan, Chris Tucker, um, Hulk Hogan, all Jason Hawes from TAPS, um, Steve and Tango from TAPS, all the way down to horror actors and actresses, WWE wrestlers, and even musicians. Yes, that's awesome. Like, it's just awesome that you, that, like, it, it seems like that part happened so fast. Like, it just, it you just it started did. getting all these, all this talent, and it was just like, boom, 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 boom. It, you know, I think, uh, and, and this is just my opinion, and a couple of them have said it to me, but I think because 
of me sitting on the other side of the table behind it and being screwed over by my agent, I know what's expected and how the client should be treated and what should happen and what should happen. And I think because that's why those first few people I had, when things went so smoothly, they started telling their friends and their friends told them and that's right. how I got bombarded with it. And I mean, I'm thankful, but I really think that that's how it happened. That's awesome. Now, you said that some of your people are, who's going to be at Phenom? Oh, so at Phenom, I have um, Jason Hogg going, and then I have, um, uh, the, oh my God, um, I can't even think of her name. Um, Sorry, did I put you on the spot? No, that's okay. Um, one of the, it happens. Like, yeah, it does. I, I have so many people, I forget people's names real easy. Um, but I have the other psychic medium that, that's doing the gallery reading besides um, Chip. I, the girl that's going to be there, I have her going to be there as well. Mm -hmm. so, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um, you? <laughs> so, so it's like, and of, course, and of course, my moonshine will be there. I was just going to ask. I was like, are yeah. we bringing any? Oh, you know, absolutely. Because? I might not have 10 or 12 flavors like last time. I might only be bringing two or three, but. Honest to God, I have not made any in like six to eight months. I've just yeah. been so, even with the coronavirus stuff, I've just been so busy with everything else. I, yeah. I just haven't had the time to do it. It's the best, it's the best shit. You, you have to, like, it really is so good. Like you could probably make a business out of that. Like I didn't, cause I mean, literally it is just. Was, I was actually, so a friend of mine, that lived here in Mass just up until about a year and a half ago. He actually owned a brewery and he was a legit brewer. He was actually selling me the, what would be called considered waste for him. All the foam and the byproduct because it's already cooked. Gotcha. I didn't have to let it sit there and ferment. I could just take it, throw it in, make That's my awesome. stuff with it. Well, he decided he didn't want to live in Mass no more and moved to Florida. So now I have to do it the hard way again. But when he was here, I was actually trying to consider talking him into it and going partners because he loved my stuff and right. using his brewery to do both as yeah. a distillery and a brewery and kind of open it up. But then he decided some some big way came in and bought it from him because of his he was doing very well with it. And he just said, no, what? I'm taking the money and moving to Florida. <laughs> Florida, they have flying cockroaches. It's so gross. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm headed that way too. So within, a, within another two years, I'll be down in Florida for good. Although any state at this point is better than New Jersey, I'm just going to put it out there. I feel the same way about Massachusetts. So, really, I yeah. see. I've never, I've never been. I want to go because you know. I mean, I feel like that's you know you everybody's got to experience you it. You were, you weren't part of the girls' trip that went to Lizzie Borden. Nope. No, I uh, was. No, Sabrina was. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know. Okay. But Kim and them, yeah, awesome. Yeah. Well, Kim, Kim called me the day you guys were leaving to tell me you guys were here. I'm like, you couldn't have called me earlier. I would have come by and said hi. I remember yeah. that too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the next, the next time anybody's going, I'm gonna go because I okay. definitely want. I definitely well, want to. If you guys do that, and again, the place that I can't mention right now. They do rent that out, and it's very, very cheap. It's like three hundred for the night. Oh wow! Okay. So if you guys want to get in there after it airs, I will let you know and get you in contact with the owner. And if you guys do that, then maybe we can plan like a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, to where you guys can come up and I can show you guys some other places around the area. Absolutely. And then you know, then you guys can go investigate that location. Oh, I would love to. I'm, so, I'm all about it. You know, I, need, I, I could take you guys out into the forest, show you the wedge, show you the Indian ceremonial area, the, the cult shacks, the pet cemetery, that type of thing. Oh, I've never seen a pet cemetery. I wonder how I would do with that. Believe yeah. it or not, you would be blown away when you see it. Um, the people that took their animals there actually have true headstones that you would think were a person's headstone. Oh, yeah. That would be me. That would be me. Yep. <laughs> yep. I mean, don't, get, don't get me I think wrong. There's some old ones. Here somewhere, Taryn. Yeah. <laughs> there's some yeah. old ones out there that are in the ground flat that are just a stone with a name and a date on it. 
But yeah. the newer ones from like mid seventies up until the late eighties are wow. all beautiful headstones that you would think were were for a person. Wow. Mm -hmm. I see. I would do that. I would totally do that. But I'm such an animal empath that I don't. I and I've never even thought to go to a pet cemetery. You know what I mean? Like I never thought. I just, I just don't know how I would how I would be. I mean, it'd be interesting. I think. Um, so a couple of psychics and mediums that I brought up there on tours have all separate times now, not all at the same time. Have all hit on the same thing and told me the same thing, and they've all seen. I don't want to say too much and give it away. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 tell me. Yeah, don't tell um, me. Seen a lot of horror at that location. I'll put it really? to you that way. Yes. Mm. So it'll be interesting to see what you grab and pick up on being the empath, um, because they said specific things that I'm not going to say, obviously. Yeah, don't. You know, it's crazy. Like even. I know I'm gonna sound crazy probably to some people, but I mean, it's this is what happens. Like literally. I'll like, you know, drive by a deer on the road that was hit and killed. And like, I picture like the five seconds before it happened. Like it just hits me and like, I just like get so emotional, mm -hmm. so upset. You know what I mean? Um, another thing is I always know when an animal is like real thirsty. I get real, real thirsty when I'm around some, an animal really? that's, yeah, I can totally, I feel that. There's like certain things and like, and, and then there are emotions. I worked in a vet's office for too long because yep. I cried. I cried every night I went home because I could just feel all of their energy. It was just, I mean, don't get me wrong. It wasn't all doom and gloom, but 75% of it was, was sad. You know what I mean? And I just couldn't do it. But so yeah, so little things like that happen with me. I mean, that's really not something I talk about a lot. So hi, here's me. <laughs> <laughs> So, okay, so you're going to be a Fion, which is awesome. Um, what do you have stuff, other stuff coming up, you know, with like, um, <laughs> you know, I mean, I know really no, is, because all the conventions, yeah, yeah. 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 You, know, you know what? They freaking uh, every year I go to Terror Behind the Walls at Eastern State in June, they put this thing out that they're not having Terror Behind the Walls. Oh, right. they feel bad already. Yeah. Oh my I god. Cried. I was like so heartbroken. Yeah, I would go every year since 2008. That's same crazy. Same thing with, with uh, ha Halloween Horror Nights down at Universal Studios. I'm the same way. I go usually the first or second week of September, and oh. they canceled it two weeks ago saying that they're not going to have it. Oh. It's it's yeah, so I'm definitely Halloween disappointed Christmas, at that. Many holidays. Yeah, but October, the month and, of and October. And this was supposed to be the 30th anniversary. Uh, yeah, the yeah, month of October so that makes it even worse. is my favorite. Like, it is my favorite month. It's my favorite holiday. I love it. You know, and I'm just like, the, and then turn behind the walls. Really, I'm like, no. Uh, all the events, too, the all the, around Halloween, we have all the uh, yeah and events, and everything's being canceled. Yep. Um, except. Yep. Some are not. <laughs> some are yeah, well, hopefully, hopefully, you know, I'm, I'm hoping some of the local ones up here still still happen because that way it doesn't ruin the whole spirit of Halloween. But I don't know. I For me, all the conventions, usually September and October, I'm usually booked at least every weekend with a convention with clients and some weekends double, um, especially because I have a, a lot of horror convention, uh, horror clients. Right. And all of them that I've had canceled. Wait, canceled. what's the one that they do in New Jersey? They canceled that though, didn't they? Monster what Mania is that, that? And New Jersey Horror Con. Yeah. Monster Mania is in, um, uh, da, da, da. I forget the where the Monster Mania one is. The New Jersey Horror Con is down in Atlantic City. No, this is, there's one that's in like Cherry Hill. At like, uh, yeah, that's oh. Monster Mania. Cherry Hill, New Jersey's Monster Mania. Yeah, so I don't and even know if there's that. There's also, there's also Chilla Theater, um, which is near Cherry Hill too. I forget what town that one is, but uh, that one's canceled too. But yeah, all I, uh, Monster Mania does Cherry Hill twice, and then mm -hmm. one down in Baltimore. They canceled all three of those, and this year was going to be the first year that they were doing a pop con. And I had clients at all four conventions, um, and we were actually doing the first ever um, two and a half men reunion 
where oh, Charlie wow. was going to be with his brother Alan and with Conchata Farrell, the main. And that was going to be at Cherry Hill, New Jersey, and it canceled now. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Bill Bill Davis had said Gettysburg Battlefield Bash was such a, and I'm gonna. I agree. I was gonna say that. Like after Phenom, after I got over Phenom being rescheduled, because that just. Yeah. But it was it was like pre COVID, so it's like it was almost pre COVID a little bit. You know what I mean? Yep. Like you were still like, okay, there's yeah. hope for the future. There's things coming up. Gettysburg Battlefield Bash. It was like we were so close. It was like one week away, and then it was like yeah. we have yep. to cancel. And I'm like, oh, that was what I've been waiting because now we've been, you know, quarant you know, you have to stay. You've been on lockdown for this yep. many months. All this crazy shit's going on around you. Where's better to go to like get away and just well, it, be it was normal? Even, it's getting it, was even, it was even worse for you guys because you guys were told to be in complete lockdown. Yeah. Oh, See, yeah, we were in, yeah. Massachusetts wasn't like that. Massachusetts, we were only in lockdown. Um, we were only told if we're not, if if we can stay home from work, stay home from work. Um, if your work shut down, stay home. Other than that, they the grocery stores, Walmart, they were all still open. People were still yeah. shopping up here because the numbers never really spiked up here for some reason. Um, so we never went in full, full lockdown. It's not until as of literally like five days ago, August 1st, now they're having a panic attack. Oh, and really? And yeah. Um, they literally Jeez. passed a, a state law. If you travel anywhere outside of the five New England states, and it blows my mind, and no offense to you guys, but New York and New Jersey, where the numbers were super high, if, we go, if we go anywhere outside of the five New England states or those two states, we have to mandatory quarantine for 14 days, or it's a $500 fine per day. Oh, how, how would they know? So I, I, I talked to somebody about that that works at the airport. They're, the actual airlines are giving the state CDC reports of who's flying from where. Yep. Uh -huh. So, so they're giving it to them. Well, so then yeah. they're coming to your house, knocking on your door, going, hey, you just flew from Florida. Are you working? Where have you been all day? Oh, you've been home? Okay. Do you have did you get tested? No, then you have to stay home for 14. If not, here's your paper. You're getting filed for five hundred dollars a day. That's so crazy. Yep. Like, oh, what if but what if you drive? Like I know it's ridiculous to Checkpoint. drive from Mass to Florida. New York has a checkpoint now, so does yeah. Florida. New Florida New York City's uh setting up checkpoints. Yeah. Well, so the funny thing, Stop it, really? Yes. Yeah, so Florida, Florida's got checkpoints. Yeah, Florida's Florida. definitely had a checkpoint. Had a checkpoint. Well, they see you yeah. driving in the state with like an out-of-state plate. Mm -hmm. Wow. So if, if they see or if Connecticut seen in Massachusetts, that's okay. If Rhode Island seen in Massachusetts or Massachusetts seen in Rhode Island, all the governors of the New England states and I guess New York and New Jersey talk and said all these six, uh, seven states can move amongst themselves with no quarantine. Wow. But if you go past New Jersey, or if you go past into Pennsylvania, or upstate New York, it, which is okay, but if you go past that, then you've got a quarantine and you get fined. Now, like me, I'm going down to Florida in September. I don't give a crap. And, so, uh, so, 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 come home, oh, get so listen, done. so like, so I'm supposed to go to Myrtle Beach in September, right? South Carolina yeah. is on the New Jersey. If you go to South Carolina and you come back in, you have to quarantine yeah. for 14 days. What I'm saying is, I don't think, I don't think New Jersey is on the South Carolina list. So we go into South Carolina. How do they know when I get back into New Jersey, other than, you know, the eye in the sky watching Paranormal Brew, which I really think they could give two shits about at this point. Um, <laughs> How would they know that I was in South Carolina if I was driving? Well, if, right? if you're driving, they wouldn't know. There's, there's right. no way they could tell, um, especially if you don't post stuff about it. You know, so like when I go in September, I'm not going to be posting pictures like normal just so I don't have a problem. But right. I also am going to get a test. So the other state law now that just got passed in Mass, before entering, if you take a, one of those COVID tests, the little swab up the nose, if you do that, um, 72 hours prior to arriving back in mass, 
as long as it's negative, you don't have to quarantine for the 14 days. So I'm just going to do that when I'm in Florida, three days before my trip, just take the swab, get it done, and be over with it. Yeah. I mean, I, I'll be honest with you, like me, me being who I am, I would, if I was like, you know what, I am, I'm going to go on this vacation. I would, out of respect for my, because I work for cardiologists. Mm -hmm. So I have not been off. I haven't been, there's been no um, essential, like there's been no shutdown time for me. Like I've been working yeah. through this whole thing, but um, out of respect for the patients and my, my coworkers, you know, I would do that, you know, oh, I if I could yeah. afford to, yeah. but I can afford to. So if they're still on the list, when September comes, I, I'm not going to Myrtle Beach. I mean, it sucks. No, but. Just, no just do the test. Yeah. You, so you can get a free test. Um, it's funny because the TV show that I'm going to be on next week said to me Monday night, says to me, hey, um, the network wants you tested because we don't want to make we want to make sure that you're not positive and that all the other cast members are sick. they're all taking one as well we're going to right. overnight we're going to overnight you a test so they literally tuesday yesterday a test showed up at my house i read the directions did everything it told me to put it back in the biohazard bag sealed up the box put it in the envelope and i mailed it out today i'll have the results by friday well that's cool so that's why I'm saying, like, I could give you the name of it. And if you go on your vacation about three days before, you just take the test, do it, send it in. By the time you get home, three days before the end of your vacation, you get home, you'll have the results back. And if you're negative, then you can show they actually give you a printout that you can bring to employees or whatever. And you could show them, hey, guess what? Here's the swab. I did it. I'm safe to come back to work. You'll come right. back. Right, right, right. So this is crazy. COVID, COVID, COVID just about life this way. Yeah, it's almost like like I was talking to a patient today, and I had I had a Redskins mask on, and he you know he comes in and he's like you know oh and he was joking he was making fun of it he's like you know oh you're racist and he goes he goes it's so ridiculous this whole cancel culture thing you know he's like it's like America just isn't American anymore he's like. It, we're supposed to be free, you know what I mean, and and be able to do what we want to do, and have freedom of speech, and freedom of religion, freedom of all this and that. And it's like we're all being told we can't do it; we're not allowed, no matter what it is. You know, it's not just this this group or that group or this one or that one. It's it's everybody, you know. And you know, there are conspiracists out there, but we won't go down the whole political yeah, thing. Yeah, that's, that's, that's never really a good conversation to have <laughs> but um yeah so um i'm looking forward to totally um drinking some moonshine at phenom yes <laughs> and wait it, it's things it's in february it's gonna be cold yeah, it's um, gonna be cold it's gonna be cold to have moonshine when it's cold yes. <laughs> See, and right, I always have right. to try to find the positive, right? So I'm like, all right, it's in February. It sucks it's not in Gettysburg because being in Gettysburg is always awesome, obviously. But I'm like, well, it's cold. So Lancaster is not going to be that bad, you know, because what's there to do? And there probably is stuff to do. No offense to anybody, but it's not Gettysburg, right? Yeah. So I'm like, all right, we're, we're just going to be like, like we're all going to be and drunk then, assholes at the at the hotel. <laughs> you know, and that's the thing. Like, when I heard that it wasn't going to be at in Gettysburg, especially at the Eisenhower, because that's where we've always had it. Yeah. I was, just, I was really disappointed because, you know, that's yeah. just, that's where all the fun from the, the, the chair races down the hallway with Belanger and Gates and, you know, all those fun things. Oh my gosh. It's not the same. Yeah. Yeah. But there was other things to do. So people were, yes. not everybody was like at the hotel all the time. You know what I mean? Whereas, yeah. In Lancaster, yeah. we're all going to be cooped up for four days, and the only place to go is the hotel bar. Yeah. <laughs> everybody's, everybody's be like, I mean, I'm, I'm sure I'm going to be happy. No. <laughs> cooped up. Ho ho hotel so bar in my room. That's where everybody's going to be. Now. Yeah. I'm listen, listen, I don't care who's there or what's happening. You at least have to give me one half a glass. And just let me enjoy it. And then it, you can do whatever else. Right. Especially if you're not going to have that much. I at least have to have some. Just a little bit. 
<laughs> oh, no, absolutely. I will have the separate little stash for me and all my friends, but then I will have the ones that want to buy this or that and have that set aside. Well, I'm going to want to buy some too. If you're going to have some to buy, I want to buy some. Okay. <laughs> cases of we'll it. have to talk before. We'll have to talk before, and I'll just set up a half gallon or a gallon for you. We're pre-ordering yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me see. Oh, there's good Irish food places in Lancaster, and they have some good beer too. No, I uh, yeah, I'm sure there are places you know to go, yeah. but you know, I mean, we're, we're talking about places like like going to the battlefield or the Jenny right. Wade house, places like that. That's what we're talking about, being able to yeah. go out and do other things besides sit at the hotel. Yes. Right. Whereas, you know, if I'm in Lancaster, like, yeah, I know there's, like, probably some cool places, but, I mean, I'd rather be hanging out with the people I haven't seen in, like, forever and my yeah. friends that are going to be there because, you know what I mean, and just have a good time, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. If we find something cool to do outside of that, that's fine, but... You know, I'm looking forward to just hanging out at the hotel and you know what I mean? Just partying with everybody and catching up. Well, it's good to to by an Amish family for dinner and then they can, <laughs> can go over for dinner and hang out with them. And yeah. <laughs> it's like Amish ghosts. <laughs> They'll be talking Remember about there was a show. Them. Wasn't there a show Amish? Oh, there was a show. Yes. There was a show. Yes. yes there oh my gosh. There was a show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll have to show you. Uh, yeah, they they tried I do remember. It didn't last long. I think it only no. like three, four no. episodes, and then they yeah. caught it. But there was one. Oh, we know our folklore. <laughs> Which I thought the paranormal was kind of taboo, in from what I hear, yeah. it's kind of taboo in the Amish. You would think. Culture. You know, well, that, that came out with that, that. That came out when the whole like you know all the Amish shows started. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a big, oh, yeah. push, you know. Yeah. What was the what was the Amish? I, I, I'm a mafia. Yeah, mafia. Amish mafia. That's what it was. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> started coming out. <laughs> <laughs> no offense to anybody. Trust no, no, me. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> They yeah. actually make really good furniture, and I'll tell you that. Well, the like, yeah, they they make amazing. Yeah, they would know how to survive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when, the, when the world goes to heck, man, I'm, I'm there. I'm in there. <laughs> yeah, I'm not hating. If, if, if something happens, I'm okay. going to roll with Amish. I'm out. No. <laughs> I'll work on that farm. <laughs> Sorry. You'll build a <laughs> home. Yep. <laughs> We'll have like uh, we're like oh remember and Weird Al came out with the Amish Paradise remember that yep. Yep. he came out with the Amish Paradise I'll be rolling into my little village my little Amish village playing that song loud like hey guys <laughs> 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 oh my God. that was good yeah um, well mm -hmm. we have like one minute left obviously we're unfortunately. On when we used to be on just the brew, we could just keep on going, but I'm on it. We're on a scheduled little time hour, so which is good. I'm very grateful for, it. and I'm happy that you had the time to spend with us. Oh no, absolutely! I was, I was super you excited much. when you guys asked me to be a part of the show. I, you know, I watched the show here and there, and I was super excited to be asked to be on it. Well, thank you. you. Know, I appreciate that. I've always considered you a great friend, and and absolutely. Sabrina, it's always been awesome to meet you, and I can't wait to meet you, Anthony. So. I was super excited to be a part of the show. Yeah, absolutely. And anytime, like, come on again. Like, I mean, absolutely. Right, we well, we stunk uh, Ocean Ocean Con too. We didn't get Ocean Con either. Yeah. Ocean oh yeah. Ocean Con. Yeah. So, yeah. Yep. Just... Oh hopefully yeah. Next, oh, yeah. Next year, I'll be around. Yeah. yeah. Next year, and you know what? It's gonna suck because I, I hope nothing overlaps because everybody's trying to squeeze everything in and. Mm -hmm. I've already had that start happening with bookings for conventions for next year with my clients. A lot of shows. Even, even getting them. off work, you know, yeah. it was a lot easier to get off work this year because everything was spread out. But now yeah. everything is rescheduling. You know yeah. what I mean for next year? Even concerts. So like I think yeah. I had to put on three or four concerts. I'm like, I hope that. Eh, New Kids on the Block concert is not going to be when Phenom is. You know no, what I mean? Exactly. So what am I yeah. going to do? <laughs> well, you definitely skip New Kids on the Block. Uh, no, I'm kidding. Yeah. That would be such a tough decision. I'm not even kidding. 
<laughs> oh my God. Uh, anyway, so yeah, so I appreciate you coming on. And um, somebody, oh, somebody was saying when we do, um, I forgot about this and the, I, for, I totally forgot, forgive me. Phenom um, is in Lancaster, but they're having an investigation at um, oh, Boobies, yeah. Boobies yeah. right? Is that how you say it? Boobies. I call it Boobies. <laughs> Bubby? Well, I think it's Bubby. Bubby. Now it's the same. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, call, I call it Boobies. It's Boobies Brewery. That's what I call it. I, I, I know I know he's going to be a part of it for a while, but I don't know what it's called. Yeah, I, I, I call it Boobies. So, so, yeah, that's one of the investigations going on. People can sign up to go and have dinner, and then they go to Boobies, or at, at Boobies, Brewery. and then they yeah. see investigation afterwards so <laughs> boobies is my story and i'm sticking to it <laughs> now it's boobs <laughs> um so all right thank well you guys uh thank you yeah, for having me you. on i appreciate oh God, it thank you. thank you very yeah. much yeah we'll talk soon and i'll see you soon yeah yeah we're we're it'll yeah. be february or i'll be coming up to uh mass for you know the self-guided john brightman tour absolutely <laughs> you guys are welcome to come up. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much. I love you. It was great right. talking. Have a good night, guys. You too. Good night. Good night. Bye. Good night. Bye. Bye, everybody. Thank you all for joining us. Bye. It was a, that was all over. Um, <laughs> next week is is. Why do I do this to myself? Oh. Uh, no, it's not. It's, oh no, it's uh, talks with uh, James and Craig. Oh, they the second? They might be, yeah. No, he's, September he's, September. He's, oh. he's the 19th. Ay, 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 paranormal. I did this last week and I know we have to go, but just yeah, give me one second. Yeah. Why do I ask? Oh, is it Sharon from uh, Amityville? I mean, oh, it's uh, Bob it's, and it's Gina. Bob and Gina. Oh, it's Bob and Gina. Yeah. All right. So next week we have Bob, uh, Christopher, and Gina Benston um, coming on the show, and their ghostly excursions. And you know, um, Gina does her show every Thursdays, the Fox Den. So we're gonna have them on next week, um, talking about same stuff, events because they run the events. They do Penhurst, which they announced Penhurst 2021 is gonna be happening. I'm so excited. Mm -hmm. Um, so we'll have them on and we'll talk all about that. I thank you everybody for joining us. We love you all. Thank you very much. Adios. Alrighty. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>